Hello and welcome back to the Bearcast for the last time in a long while. This is still the How to Turn a Dragon podcast. I'm your host, HC, and with me is... Wolf. And today, we all knew this was, going, this was going to come, and we all pretty much knew that this would be the last extra episode until who knows when. It's definitely the last episode with Hiccup and Toothless. Um, supposedly... Supposedly. This is our review of How to Turn a Dragon Homecoming. Well, but before Until the live action remake. Shut up. Shut up. The only I'm live action that. The I only live it. action the only live action remake of How to Turn a Dragon I need is Jay Baruchel with his cute black cat. That's all I need. I want a live action How to Train Your Dragon with with Jay. That'd be great. Uh, well, Jay's you know, hiccups, uh, Gerard Stark, that'd be fun. You know, you know that Gerard Butler is actually really short in real life. Yep, like that's why it'd be fun. Well, you know, they, ma they made... Um, <coughs> what's his Just name? CGI they height made... onto him. Yeah. Just CGI they... make him taller. And, you know, they made Peter Dinklage into a giant in Avengers Infinity War. So I'm they assuming can do it. it's possible. Yeah. Well, but then again, that's DreamWorks, not Disney. Anyway, who cares? How to Turn Dragon Homecoming. But before we actually talk about the show, um, you're probably wondering, but wait, Belkast people, the show isn't coming out until December 3rd. And you we are right. And watched a leak. Yeah, and, and you know, you are right. But the thing is that for some reason I cannot explain and I... Considering the same bullshit had happened with Hidden World, where it was released way before scheduled in other countries, in in this case, it it aired in Latin America, in uh, yeah, in Latin America, like I think a few weeks ago, I want to say, and we indeed watched a leak. There was also a leak in English. I also watched that in Spanish, even though I barely know Spanish, uh, but. Yeah, this this was leaked, and I do want to ask you: What do you think about the idea about the fact that you know both Hidden World and this were released so ahead of time in other territories before before America? That is the nightmare. That is regional releasing and regional stuff like that. It's annoying and stupid. It shouldn't be a thing, but it is. And, you know, people have put the blame on DreamWorks. I would actually go against the norm and put it on Universal. I mean, <clears throat> it really depends on whose fault it is. Like, is it DreamWorks' fault? Is it Universal's fault? I haven't kept up with why it was released early. If that was just a fault of the network they gave it to, I don't know. It's simply put, like, it doesn't really matter whose fault it is. If they didn't want it to happen, they shouldn't have let it happen. It happened, so we get to cover it early. I'm not complaining. Mm -hmm. I can always yeah, watch it again. Uh, and let's be honest, like the leak isn't the best quality, right? Yeah. And I you can know, always watch it's it again watching, when it you know, you, at you the know, quality the leak, it should be at. Even though the leak you saw, good sir, is not the leak I first saw. Like <clears> the first, the very first, first leak was like actually through a phone. Like That's somebody. What this one was too. No, no. The, the oh, one... oh, oh, oh. I see what you're talking about. The audio was not recorded properly on the one I saw, so it sounded like it was very tinny, like this was recorded from a TV, is yeah. essentially what it sounds like, which is, it's fine, it's whatever. Again, it's a leak. We're but then again, the we, do, we do also want to say that we don't encourage stuff like this, and we are going to get, uh, I'm personally planning on getting a DVD of this once yeah. this is out. The only reason we watch the leak is because, in my case... I'm an impatient asshole, I'm not, and I kind of dragged Wolf with me because I kind of I wanted to talk, to do this episode already. Yeah, I can so, wait. Yeah. I learned patience. <laughs> Waited ten years for Kingdom Hearts three. I've still not played it, so I'm still waiting. Not been spoiled on that yeah. at all, so I know patience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it sucks. I waited. I waited. I'm not sure about you, but <clears throat> I waited. 13 years for Kingdom Hearts 3 because 2 came out in 2006. So, yeah. Uh, something like that. Like, I'm still waited. So, my 13 years, so I'm 14 years now. So, ha. 
Okay, fair <laughs> point, fair <laughs> point. But then again, you can you can blame me for not for you not owning a PS4. Yeah, which okay. you, which is something all of you should do. But that's a that's a topic for another day. Anyway, how to change again homecoming to those of you who are new to the broadcast. Uh, first of all, welcome. Good to have you here. Second of all. We are going to start with a bit of a non-spoiler <coughs> review, you know, general thoughts, what we what we think and stuff. When we will go into spoilers, because we are going to spoil something, we will give you a heads up so that you could close the close the episode, wait until it airs, and come back later. And because I know a lot of people who do want to wait and don't want to see this just yet. So with this, with that said. Non spoilers uh, thoughts. Wolf, what did you think about How to Turn a Dragon Homecoming? It sucked. Okay. <laughs> Want to elaborate? <laughs> Want to elaborate on that? I, it was terrible. <laughs> it was awful. I hated every minute of it. The kids are annoying. They're stupid. The nightlights are even worse. God. Why? To those of to those of you who haven't listened to the broadcast before, this this is Wolf's sarcastic tone. I know it because I'm stuck with this person for three years. Mm -hmm. So no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so please tell the tell the folks your actual opinion because I know because there is something I want to say about uh, this thing. So, I enjoyed it. Right, it's cute. It's adorable. It's nothing too major. Nothing too serious. You're not gonna don't come into this expecting anything amazing. Right, it is very much what it is a holiday thing that it is cute and adorable and fun. Like, this is meant to sell the nightlights as more than likely toys and Zephyr and nothing as well. Like, mm -hmm. let's be honest, this is going to sell nightlight, you know, merch hard mm. when it comes the hidden out. World, the Hidden World by itself sold a ton of, ni of nightlights merch, so... Not as much yeah. as this will, I'm sure. Like, this is all yeah, about the nightlights. That's, that, that's what I'm saying, though. The, the be, by the way, like, give me a nightlight plush. I'm all on top of that. Um, yeah, there are actually a few, and yeah, uh, most definitely there will be plushies. And you know what? Uh, count me in, they are adorable. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, like you said, I enjoyed the show a lot myself. And you know, it, again, don't because I think um, you know what? I'll say this later, but uh, I, I think it was a nice, uh, it was a nice finale, nice way to wrap everything up. Um, you know, it's yeah. not. You know, it it's uh, not. It's not going to change anything in the in the final of the hidden world itself, like we suspected and feared. So that's good. I was right, but, by the way. You were wrong. Okay. Okay. Fair. I about how will... this was going to go with them seeing the dragons. Hey, I got a few stuff right myself, so we'll get to that. But um, on that note, it was fun. It was cute. It was just the right amount of what it need to be. Mm -hmm. It's it's not going it's not going to change anything. And you can definitely skip this if you are not interested. But I think I think it was like it put a nice little bow on the whole thing, which I can complain. Yep. 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 But but before I go into spoilers, I do want to say that I've seen some of the negative opinions on this, and. I honestly think DreamWorks went into a no-win scenario with this short. What's the because, negative opinions on it? I've not been keeping up. Well, from what I've seen, basically, and you know what? I, I, I'm at a, just in case, spoilers from this point forward. Yeah. If you yeah. don't... We, that you had our journal review, now go watch it when it comes out, or if you want to find the leak, we don't condone it, but you know... It's out but there, you... mm -hmm. if you want to watch it. Blame the guy on Tumblr who put us online. And we we definitely <laughs> do not condone it. Do not mm -hmm. pirate Homecoming, watch it when it airs on TV, or buy it on DVD. Which is what we're planning to do. Now with the legalities out of the way, definitely go watch it online. It's really good, decent, mm -hmm. something. Yeah, it's a cute show. So, with, this, uh, with that said... Negative opinions, which I do not get, and uh, because spoilers the, from this point on. Yeah, yeah, spoilers from this point on. Uh, so everyone was really disappointed when everyone died, and I can agree. This is not a way to do a Christmas special. I'm kidding. So, 
So basically, the, there seems to be two camps uh, regarding the people who don't like this. The one, the one who thinks uh, the, there's the half the things that Hiccup and Toothless should have been reunited by the end, which I'm not sure if you've seen the same movie we did when you went to see Hidden World, but we there was no I mean, way in hell those this people was going right, to work. Like their their I think their opinion is is they thought this was more self-contained, right? They came into this expecting something probably a little bit longer and just a little bit more heartwarming. Like it would have been oh dude for them dude, it would have been I, very oh toothless and hiccup oh instead of seeing toothless fly away in the background and then getting a shot of the finale of the third movie again right of the mm -hmm. epilogue from the third movie yeah but then again like i know i, I get what those people kind of wanted from this right like i understand uh, you know on the one hand i'm getting it i don't think it's uh, enough to say this is terrible and you should hate it but I do get what those people like. What they came into this expecting isn't what they got, and that's fair enough. But don't judge it for what you didn't get. Judge it for what you did get, right? Yeah, exactly. But there's one thing that also I think people kind of miss the point of, the, because I think this uh, this is also the side of the people who didn't like the hidden wall just because Hiccup and Toothless part. And I forget the rest of the movie. This yeah. one thing. In that case, yeah. right? Like you've kind of missed the point of all of how to train your dragon like that was always going to be the case like at least toothless lived guys come on yeah and so the so go watch the, old yellow but, people <laughs> please yeah but you will then, see the, exactly so why you hand, should be thankful <laughs> yeah so there's there's this thing where you know uh, which again, not to discredit people who disliked Hidden World because of that. I'm not saying that, even though it is missing the point. But at the same time, don't expect a short to come and fix this. Because then you get the other side of the equation, which is like, oh, then why would the dragons return? It destroys the whole point. And they somehow think that this short did destroy the point, which I'm sorry, I don't see this at all. Because... No one really sees the dragons. The dragon uh, actually, I mean, it's only it, it's only Tutus and the light, uh, and it's only Tutus and his family that come back. And even then, no one uh, except Zephyr. But we'll get to that. No wow. one really sees. Well, no, well, so it's just Tutus and his family. We're not even yeah. gonna mention the Light Fury by name now, huh? HC, jeez, <laughs> sexist. Well, Okay, let's assume it's easier to say Toothless and his family rather than Toothless, the Light Fury, and the Night Lights, okay? I want to keep it simple for myself. But anyway, back on, back on point, these are the only drugs that are, that are here. Stonefly doesn't come back, Meatlug doesn't come back, no other dragon comes back. Yeah. And again, None of the Vikings see them. It's not. It's not like. Um, it's not like necessarily a happy reunion, where you which know what this cancels means, right? the film. You know what this means, right? Let me finish the point, no, and then. No, I mean, you, you, Stormfly, Meatlug, Hookfang. None of them showed up, right? You know what this means, right? What does this? What does it mean? I'm afraid of the answer, but what does it mean? They all died. Well, kind of stuff. <laughs> this is kind of contradicting the epilogue where we see Stonefly that being wasn't Stonefly, found. That was just some random natter. Yeah, I'm what you sure. Didn't see I'm is sure. the breakdown Astro I, had I, I, I'm after sure the war Ellie, with Grimmel and the Armada. I'm All the sure other dragons died. Every other, I'm sure every other natter would allow Astro to fly here. Yeah, so, <clears> perfect logic. It was a natter buddy. that knew Stormfly, so they were they were best buds. Okay, before you hear you, before you hurt someone, let's especially yourself. Uh, I am so again. I think uh, considering that even after everything we see, some people would still say it's contradicting the ending. Somehow, I'm not going to argue with this. Uh, they probably see something I don't. But at the same time, you have the you have the half that wanted the uh, hiccup and total separating to be retconned. And you have the part which thinks this is retconned. I don't think they could. They really and they entered into into a no win situation, in my opinion. I don't. Which, I mean, I don't think they did because both of these sides are silly. Being polite about it, like it's there's no way this retcons the movie, and there's no way 
to what the movie retconned because the movie ends the way it needs to. Again, to those who want the movie retconned and want to see Hiccup and Toothless stay together, go watch old... I, I have to assume a lot of them are very young because they've not seen Old Yeller because if they have seen Old Yeller, they would be thankful. <laughs> mm. Because if you got... This, uh, you're talking about the imagine, movie Imagine, where... imagine seeing the ending of How to Train Your Dragon 3 is... Hiccup having to kill Toothless because that's the ending yeah. for Old Yeller. Spoilers. Yeah, you know something? There was a theory going on for uh, way before that third movie came out, which was this that Hiccup mm -hmm. would have to kill Toothless. I I'm know, glad because, I didn't. <laughs> because Old Yeller, didn't because go. it's it's because again, like How to Train Dragon, I've said it before, right? How to Train a Dragon is the story of the boy and his eggs, right? The eggs in this case being Toothless the Dragon. Toothless the Dragon gives Hiccup the confidence he needs to become a better person to do better in his own life and eventually he can function without toothless and toothless can function without him so you know you have to figure out like you know do you keep toothless around at that point or do you let him leave or does something else happen in the mm -hmm. case of how to turn your dragon hiccup lets toothless go whether or not you think that's a good moral whether or not you think that's bad moral is a completely different discussion up for uh, that could be up for debate simple fact of the matter is Toothless leaves, we don't kill Toothless. Mm -hmm. If you want your heart broken, go watch Old Yeller and you can see, and then you can understand exactly why it would be terrible if they killed Toothless. If you want your heart broken. Yeah. Then you can just break your yeah. own heart with your imagination. Mm -hmm. on, that, on that note, um, the, but uh, what, I, what I want to say about the, the two camps, uh, the two camp series that, you know, their opinion. I'm not uh, disqualifying that. But at the same time, going into a going into a short film with such expectations on either side is kind of doing the shot itself uh, injustice. I, I will mean, say this. again, like and, I said, right? You can't judge it for what it's not. Judge it for what mm -hmm. it is. Right? Yeah. Because and also on not, that note, people who thought. But uh, this, and uh, but I will say that everyone who thought this was going to be an official How to Turn Dragon Four, I've got nothing to say to you. <laughs> a bit hopeful. I get why, but a a little bit hopeful, just a bit. Uh, you know something. This is probably a topic for another day. But I'm so sick of not just in this case specifically, but just. We have a perfect ending. Let's leave it at that. Because it's just people want more, right? Like they enjoy the world. I know people. I know people want, want more, more, but you. But you know something. I prefer a franchise that I really like to end, uh, to end with me wanting more and be satisfied with how it ended. Then, oh, then it, then it going on but I mean, for it, eternity. It's... And going, just die already. Looking at you, Simpsons. Yeah, think of it this way, right? Like, I think many of us, especially if it's something we really got into and really loved and really enjoyed, when we get to that point of it's at its end, there's going to be no more of it. Like, it does kind of hit you all of a sudden, like, wow, like, that's a, you know, in a way, like, you know, that's a part of my life that I dedicated to this thing now done with. I now have to move on and find something more. And you know, it's, for some, you know, for many people, that can be a slightly hard thing to let go of, right? Like, that can be, mm -hmm. you know, wow, like, this is done. This is over. This is possible. This is more than likely the last How to Train Your Dragon thing that I'll get featuring Toothless and Hiccup, right? That can be mm -hmm. hard. That can be somewhat hard to reconcile. So I do get the idea of wanting more and not wanting that to end. Right, I do get that. I do understand. I that. get it too. I get it too. But at the same time, do, you do just, have to learn to move on, though. It's much better. That's the that point. That's the point of the did. final movie in, gen in general. Yeah, you need to let go sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. So take and, that lesson to heart, people. God. Or in the or to quote uh, a game that wasn't supposed to exist but it did because people were mad about its predecessor's ending suck it up princess no one cares for your tears <laughs> that's all, that's really the best way to put it but um anyway to homecoming itself because we kind of went overboard with 
with your opinions on it. So normal so, podcast. So anyway, um, we do have a we do have a, a lot more of the Zephyr and Afnik and the Nightlight. So uh, what are your thoughts on Zephyr and Afnik in this short? They're adorable. Um, Zephyr is definitely favorite, obviously. Yeah, I think she's gonna <laughs> yeah, be a lot I of people's agree. favorite. Like she was my favorite just from the ending of three, and this elevated her. By, by a kilometer she's, but, she's uh, hiccups inventiveness with astrid's sass and just you know everything else so it's just perfect combination she's basically a younger dagger because she's so psychotic with her traps <laughs> that's amazing uh, i disagree with about younger dagger she's not as psychotic she just loves inventing like her dad just wait just wait just wait oh, when when, when she'll grow up she will be Actually, this is my new Rescue Riders connection. Uh, oh one day, like uh, one day when Zephyr grow up, she will do an operation to become a man, and that man will be Mangus. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> you have fun in that hole. I'll leave you to it. Here's a shovel. <laughs> Said the person <clears throat> who claims this is hiccup. Oh, but whatever. <laughs> Moving on, so so Zephyr, so Zephyr is awesome, and I do like Nafnik for how dumb he he's is. He's been hanging with Tough too much. He's yeah, been he's is, been around Uncle Tough way too much. And this is something like shout out to our good friend uh, Leffy, who actually made a comic of Tough not babysitting Nafnik and teaching him everything he knows. So go to her page, look it up. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I, I like both of them. I do like uh, how Zephyr doesn't have an accent, but Nafnik does. <laughs> That's the, you know, inconsistency at its finest. Hold Wolf? on. Uh, excuse me. Sorry, what? No, I was playing the thing again. People might have got a bit of background audio there. So sorry about that. Just so I oh. could remember bits and pieces of it that I needed to remember. What did you say now? Mm. That uh, it's kind of, it's kind of funny that how Zephyr doesn't uh, doesn't have a Scottish accent, but Nafnik does. Ah, uh, yeah. By the way, fun fact about this: this is actually Craig Ferguson's youngest son voicing him. Hmm, that's cool. Yeah. Nice little nod. Mm -hmm. uh, now get ready anyway, for the fan um, theories. Oh God, <laughs> get ready for the fan oh, theories. No. You know he is blonde. Gabriel's blonde. Oh no. <laughs> and Astrid's oh, no. blonde. Get oh, ready no. for the fan theories. Oh, no. But actually, See what you he did? More, he has more of Hiccup's hair, though, and Hiccup's face. So, yeah. He is literally the model of a young <laughs> on the blonde. So, yeah. No, no way. He's Hiccup's boy. Get ready for the fan theories yeah. that you caused. Uh, don't you want to say you caused because you encouraged this idea, but... Nope. Uh, Putting it you all see, on you. You see... You see, this this I'm not sure if you heard this, but this was uh, this was the motorcycle uh, going to deliver you all the fan theories in mail. That was Enjoy me them. riding away, leaving you here all on your own. <laughs> bye bye. You're not here anyway. What the hell? I left. I'm back. <laughs> That's what the hell. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> to the <laughs> nightlights. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, the night lights. So my head canon, if you're talking about head theories, is that there's the uh, there's the black uh, night light with the blue eyes. Mm -hmm. My head canon is that he's going to take over Toothless as the alpha. I mean, he definitely seems like the leader of their little group of the night lights little group, right? Like he's definitely mm -hmm. the more curious one, the more exactly you know, he's the the, the, the one who knows how to be more stealthy. The other two definitely. Yeah. The other two put me in the mind of literally the twins and how they go back and forth and bigger, like Tough Nut and Rough Nut. Those yeah. two nightlights are literally just the twins and how they're always fighting. It's literally just, hey, it's the twins, but in dragon form. There yeah, you but go. hey, I, I, I love them. I love them all, but uh, this yeah, sure. uh, nightlight is going to, with the blue eyes, is going to be to lose a successor the way I see it. Yeah. And also, I, I love, said before, I love... right, the one with the blue eyes looked to me like a clown because of his, the way they did his coloration with his lower jaw being white and the white ears and the blue eyes and the mostly black face. Like, it's a little bit too much like a clown, if I'm honest. But I'll admit, 
the design grew on me because he's very much adorable to watch in motion. So I will admit, mm -hmm. as much of a clown as he looks like, he did grow on me. My little clown boy. Yeah. And but but also I love how they use the I love how they use their wings, <laughs> like um, like when uh, the, there's the white night light that uh, is pointed, is uh, standing up too much. So the so the one so like um, so blue eyes, yeah. So blue eyes actually lowers them down with his wing, or that they actually tap each other with the, with with their wings. I love that. That's adorable. It was like, also charming. very adorable to see like toothless catches them, and then they all just point at one another. Yeah, that's that's great. And that's, then you like, hear, I love. You and know, then you just see you the light what? fury and toothless growling at them, admonishing them, and getting mad at them. Like. Like what I love though at, at that point is that you know but the twins as you call them are pointing at blue eyes and blue eyes is pointing, pointing at, at both, both of them. them. Yep. <laughs> that's that's amazing. I love this. Ah, so good. Um, but uh, but yeah, one another thing I like is that when Tutus and the Light Fury find out that the night lights are gone, like you throughout the entire uh, Hidden World movie, you actually see the the Light Fury. Has been, you know, you know, being like the calm one between her and Toothless. Like mm -hmm. even in promotional, she's she's the calm one. She like she's cool. She's smooth and everything. But the moment her kids go missing, she panics. I love that little. Touch. I mean, I think we know who the better parents are here, right? Like the Night Fury and the Light Fury. Are, you know, Toothless and the Light Fury are definitely the worst of the two parents because their kids are gone and they just immediately run around panicking. Like we definitely well, know who the better parents are, take up an Astrid. Well, honestly, if your kids just disappeared in the middle of the night, wouldn't you react? The first thing you do, you panic, and then you take action. First thing I do is don't have kids. Well, uh, it's too late for that in this case. Also, nature, you are not a dragon last time I checked. But uh, speaking of uh, adorable things with the dragons, I love how that there's actually a point where Hiccup tells Astrid, I wonder if Toothless misses me too. And we actually see Toothless drawing Hiccup. Yep. Uh, you know, they, this, and you know, he actually shows the kids like, like he, like he tells them the story through drawings. That's mm -hmm. great. <laughs> Yeah, it's a nice little touch. Uh, because, like it's well done. Because because you know the twins are actually adding uh, wings to to the hiccup drawing that he did, yeah. which he finally learned how to do, by the way, <laughs> since the first movie. But uh, but then he like um, the lead said draws a dragon, you know, opposite of hiccup, and actually like draws like a leash, which is like no, we were friends, we were connected, oh. uh, and a lot. and then there's yeah. well, he. Maybe because he puts a, he draws it to the to hiccup, drawing Hiccup's hand, so maybe that's why I figured the leash. I don't know. I'm a dog person, if you couldn't tell. But uh, I also like that the Light Fury. You're not necessarily sure if she's still kind of like eh about Hiccup, or if she's actually kind of said that that you know Toothless has a best friend he doesn't see anymore. It's kind. Of, it's one of those things that's kind of left to interpretation, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. But um, going back to New Belk for a second, uh, one thing I want to say is that if there's any new thing this franchise should take from this shot as a meme, is every time Hiccup says, "And then it hit me," and he get, actually gets <laughs> hit by something. <laughs> By yeah. something Zephyr did. I love this, and this is my new meme from this show. I like agree. Just, that got me to laugh a few times. <laughs> and then it hit me. <laughs> Poor uh, Hiccup. I, they just, that kid's going to kill him with one of her traps. And, and you know something? This is actually, and this is another thing that said in, that I found interesting that, you know, it is 10 years since the dragons left, and you can tell that some of the Berkians just moved on from this and the new generation that's been born doesn't necessarily know all of this. They don't know dragons were a part of Berk. They don't really know who Stuik is. They're, and which, you know, some people might say is kind of disrespectful, but at the same time, you can't always know about stuff that happened before your time. This is actually a realistic approach to this. 
Here's my question. What are Valka and Eret doing? Yeah, that's uh, that's actually, if I can point out the problem, where the hell is Valka? Where the hell is Eret? And, and especially Gabel talking about how he's going to spend Snuggle Tag alone and everything. Um, Hello. HC. Okay, HC has died. Well then, so yeah, as HC was saying, like Gobber talks about how he was going to spin Snuggle Tog alone, and we just don't see Valka and Eret at all. So I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> Hello, HC, are you back? Wolf. Hello, are you back? Uh, okay, uh, I Discord was here. Seems to, I Discord seems to be having issues. Okay, so we're sorry about that, but uh, yeah, I did say, you know, what's the last thing you heard me say? That Gobber said he was going to be sp spending Snuggle Tog alone, and I just carried on from there for a bit. But if you want to go uh, ahead, go back, go back, go ahead. So, uh, okay, so I said, you know, he's talking about how he's going to spend Snuggle Tog. Oh, shoot. <laughs> kind of thing. What about that? <laughs> Repeat that again. <laughs> for the love of God. <laughs> Apparently, Discord doesn't like me talking about Gabber and Eret being a thing. Nope. No gays here. Discord. Oh, boy. Let's not. No, we didn't say that. <laughs> what did I hear? What did I hear? We're not going to what? assume that Discord hates gay people, though. That's not what we're going to assume. I didn't say that. I say it, no, I know. It we're not going to say this that. specific shape, apparently. We're not going to say that, though, because, you know, <laughs> we're not implying that Discord does that or hates that. No, not at all. Do not come after us, Discord, at all. Yeah, and on that note, though, I was also asking, I also asked, you know, about Valka, you know, you abandoned your son, now you are, you are abandoning your grandchildren? Like, what the hell? She died. Oh, for the love of God. Okay, you know what? Eric Maybe. died too. Maybe. <laughs> oh, God. Very, I have a joke is... for you. <laughs> This is this is going to be good, but you know what? Nope. I'm not going to, I'm not going to run from this. So yeah, what is your joke? Oh no, I'm going to run from it. No, <laughs> no. Maybe at the very end, uh, I'll okay. save it for you. Oh, for the love of God! Anyway, uh, back to back to the thing though. <clears throat> um, so again, going back to what I said about um, you know. Uh, the the new generation doesn't uh, you know know about dragons or stuff. I do like that Z when Zephyr um, points out the you know <clears throat> everything why she thinks dragons are dangerous. Uh, that she does uh, bring she does bring it up based on stuff she found at Stuix um, at Stuix, um, old books. And moreover, she why does did they write up no other new books? Why? Yeah, that's they a, had that's all that time. Why did they never write any other new books? Like, hey, we're friends with dragons. Let's just use all the dragon books that basically told us how to kill dragons instead, though. Well, you Those know, books are still like, useful. Let's not write a new it, book at all. You know, it's not necessarily that. I think it's more implied that she just uh, searched among the older books and found something. So <clears throat> I am I believe that was the intention. That what she happened to Fishleg's she... dragon book? Apparently, did he just write it all down as... You know, here's how terrible and scary dragons are, but this is why we love them. Again, again. What are you doing, books. fish legs? Write a write a better book. Jeez. Well, yeah. Well, you know, would you trust fish legs or would you trust your grandfather? I trust you fish me. legs. He can probably okay. write down way more information about the dragons than Stoic could. Stoic can tell you how to kill them. Fish legs can tell you how to take care of them. In a long-winded. Uh terribly annoying way but you'll definitely know a lot about dragons by the time you're done fair point but uh, on that note though More i do like that zephyr, that, Ze that zephyr has to ask Hiccup up what happened to his leg which is like so you so until yeah. that point did, you, did she just <laughs> assume her father was born with no leg like <laughs> Like, or they just never at, told at, them. Uh, she's supposedly eight years old. Was it never a topic that was brought up? Hey, you probably just kind of... I, I doubt it. You know, it, it. You'd be surprised just kind of how you 
go about thinking of something and never really questioning it, right? Like you just kind of assume like, hey, this yeah, is a okay. thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, fair. But yeah, due to Zephyr not uh, thinking not so highly of the dragons and, you know, also dragging Nafnik into this and, uh, you know, just the new generation doesn't uh, know who's two kids, they decide to put on a um, snuggle talk performance about how the Vikings became friends with dragons. And this is something that I do want to point out. Hiccup makes like a toothless animatronic, which why would he give it a feature to Plasma Blast, quote unquote? <laughs> it's Hiccup. Why even, would he not? Even Gaber asks, like, what the, why would you install this feature? It's <laughs> like, Hiccup. Why what? would he not? Obviously, Hiccup is going to install that feature. Obviously. Uh, considering the play itself, uh, what do you think about Tough Nut playing Hiccup? That was funny. I also love the joke of Astrid walks up and confuses Tough Nut for Hiccup. That yeah, was that's, funny. that's that great. Yeah, Fishlex, however, great. can do an amazing stoic. Yeah, <clears throat> who knew? <laughs> who knew he had it in him? Um, but uh, so yeah, but and yet this they still another... get Gobber to play Stoic instead, who then catches his beard on fire. Who catches his fake Stoic beard on fire? By the way, that's an amazing fake beard, and I would mm-hmm. I would love to ha- I would love to have it and cosplay Stoic. Also, at some point. I saw and heard that Black Friday reference. That was terrible. That was such a it, bad that, yeah. joke. <laughs> Black Plague Friday, Jesus. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's. That was terrible. You should be ashamed of that, writers. <laughs> well, what can you do? Uh, at least there's no Halloween knockoff. Uh, but then, um, going back... Yeah, we kind of agree that this is probably the last well, I mean, thing in Canada. No, we, we do have a Halloween no- knockoff. Rescue Riders. It had a Halloween holiday. So, no, we do have a Halloween knockoff. Well, it's not canon, so... It no. is canon. No. Yep. No. It is. No, we that it is. we're moving on. You agreed on, that it is. On. You agreed I with never, my theory of rescue I, riders. You said I it was never, a good theory. I, I just because I said it, just because I said it's good doesn't that mean it's, it's, canon. it's canon. No, it's not. You, you can't have it both ways. It's, it can't be a good theory and not be canon. It's a th- good theory, and canon. <laughs> okay, there, there are so many things wrong with what you just said, but I was. Already said a lot of wrong things at the beginning of this, so I'm not going so to comment on this. I'm right. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Anyway, uh, there's actually uh, while getting the, that play uh, going though, uh, we have a return of an old classic. Da da da. We're doomed. This is mm-hmm. this is a welcome reference. Uh, and also when um, they are getting re- when Hiccup is getting ready. At, Inside the Tutor's animatronic, they have he has this talk with Astrid about you know how the play doesn't represent uh, what actually happened correctly, and Astrid tells the uh, tells them, well, you know there are a few liberties taken, but it stays true to the mess uh, to the point. And so, do you think that's actually an argument people have about the books versus the movies? I mean, I'm sure there are. <laughs> More than likely. You know, it's a, like they took, they took all these liberties and it's like, well, it seems true to the point. So, <laughs> might as well. And actually, what do you think about the fact that the play doesn't, doesn't present take up as with the, with the right amount of uh, justice, all of his deeds? And like, um, it, because people have said that this play doesn't do Hiccup justice, considering all that he's done regarding I the I mean, dragons. of course it doesn't. It's like a five-second play in a 30-minute mo- short short movie. So, of course, it's not going to do it justice. <laughs> what I mean is that in the canon, like, people just brush it aside. Like, it, they, don't, they don't really <clears throat> present it as Hiccup did this. Well, Oh, you, like you're saying, like in the short movie itself, they brush aside yes. of what Hiccup. I mean, again, like that's Gobber. Like he's, like, he gives Sto everything that Hiccup did. He says Stoic did. So, which again, I didn't have much of a problem with it because it's I just silly. Saw, it's because just, I saw know. it as because I did see it as a joke, and <clears> uh, yeah. and you know, because Hiccup does have a problem with that. It's not just that they all legitimately go with it. So. 
Uh, I didn't have much of a problem with it, but I can. But that's a point I can see. We then said when the when the play goes awry, I, the, uh, we now officially saw it. We have a picture we can use for it. Fishlegs and Roughnut is officially a thing. Yeah. It's not loud and fish likes cannot stop a fire apparently at all. Yep. They actively <clears throat> made it worse. I do want to say though when they they have the close ups on Hiccup Gobber and I think Roughnut's uh, face with like the, that split screen, their expressions are great. Which again, I will say the animation was actually really good. This it wasn't yeah. traced to the it wasn't traced to the edge like I imagined. It was it reminded me more. I think this was more of the movies. I think this yeah. was definitely more in line with the films and the movies. Like, I didn't see anything wrong with this animation-wise. I think it was exceptionally well done. Yep. And and then, among all the chaos that goes on on stage, Toothless notices that his friend in the Night Fury costume is falling off a cliff, and he's rushing to rescue him. Which gives the wrong feelings, I won't lie. No. Um it, I mean, to be clear, it seems like he doesn't quite recognize that it's Hiccup in the suit at first because he smells the suit and then realizes that it's Hiccup and then licks the suit, you know, saying yeah. hi to Hiccup. But <clears throat> Hiccup doesn't realize that it's Toothless that saved him. Yeah, this is, a, this is something that, you know, it's kind of sad, but at the same time, I know why they did it. And I appreciate that they want to stick to Cam because, like um, the plot synopsis said, this is taking place between between Hiccup and Astrid's wedding and the epilogue. Mm-hmm. So, so they couldn't show they couldn't show them actually uniting. So I appreciate yeah. that. But I mean, I it's not that Hiccup doesn't see them though. Like Astrid, Hiccup, Gobbler, Zephyr, yeah, but they all see the dragons. All see yeah, the Light Fury, but... Toothless, and the Nightlights flying away at the end of this. And yeah, then that's by that, true, at the but... end of this, we do get to see like the epilogue from the third movie ever so like again a little bit of that like we get to see a little bit of that again <clears throat> no but what i mean is that not that hiccup doesn't see toothless toothless doesn't, but he doesn't see get hiccup to... now yeah but, but they don't have their reuniting moment i understand yes but we do you know uh, I, I thought it was you know it was a clever little nod and funny that we got to see gobber have the you know hand on nose moment with toothless or you know gobber which playing people stoic think... Yeah, which people think uh, that Toothless is a hiccup cinematronic. Yeah. Because like, he's, he's behind a puff of smoke. So. Yeah, because they can't see Toothless very well, so they don't. They think it's just hiccup animatronic, and that leads them into thinking, like, hey, that's an amazing animatronic now. And so Zephyr runs back behind the stage to congratulate her dad. Before we she's... get to this, before okay. we get to this, I do want to ask you, wh- Am I the only one who wants this toothless animatronic in a Five Nights at Freddy's mod? Yes, you are. You're the only one. No, I'm not the only one. I know someone... You're the only one on this show. Okay. Well, you don't like fun. No, I don't. Uh, Scott Carter, and if you're listening to this, toothless in the next Five Nights at Freddy's, go wild. (laughs) Prepare to get sued. (laughs) <laughs> well, um, you'll probably be able to, to negotiate Five nights something. in court. <laughs> Five nights in court. Oh, wow. Uh, it's, uh, but anyway, now we get to the point where Zephyr actually sees Toothless. Mm-hmm. D- despite liking the shot, this I have a problem with. Really? I thought it was great. What is your like, problem? Okay, here's the thing. The the scene as it's pulled, as it's being done, as the like in terms of direction, pacing and everything, it's good. It's even great. But then what kind of bugs me about this is that when Hiccup comes to visit Toothless later on in the hidden world, and you know, it is kind of implied that uh, Toothless kind of figures out that she's Hiccup's kid. At least, mm-hmm. I think that's what the what the direction is. Yeah, that's and what it then, is. And then, and then he sees this exact at the very least. yeah, and then he and then he sees this exact same girl with the, this guy he doesn't necessarily recognize at the, at the epilogue for the hidden world, and it's like, 
wait, doesn't he recognize the girl at the very least? I mean, you have and to then, think like, also, how much time and... is between this and the epilogue. And like, you know, you have, and I know no. what you're probably going to bring up, like Zephyr is afraid of Toothless and she doesn't go. Exactly. But I mean, again, like that doesn't not make sense because she still never had, she had like a brief moment where she saw Toothless up close and that was it. She got nothing else with Toothless in this shot. Yeah, but then, So it makes sense that she would still then, be afraid. But then after that, but then after this, she, she tells Hiccup, Dad, you didn't tell me Tutas is actually going to be here. He's amazing. He's beautiful and everything. And um, Yeah, but yeah, that doesn't mean she's any more... But again, like, you have to think. The epilogue, they show, like, you know, Tutas jumping on top of Hiccup. Of course, she's still going to be afraid of him. She's never had any close reaction to him. She literally just stood there and saw him. And, like, she even dropped her little stick knife that she was going to go for and grab until she saw Toothless up close, right? Like, she was still afraid of Toothless, even in this shot. Oh, well, yeah, but... But again, I get what I get what you're saying, but at the same time, I think this is something... I'm, I'm not sure if I would say cut it out entirely. I disagree. But... I think it's fine the way it is. You're wrong. Okay. As usual. Well, sure. <laughs> sure I'm wrong. <clears throat> I'm I'm the guy who, I'm not the guy who's going against Dean Dabla himself by saying that Rescue Riders is canon. I mean Dean's wrong, obviously. Okay, before we open a can of worms that I don't want to deal with at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and but and the ending where he, where Tutas actually shows up at Hiccup's house and eats the fish Hiccup made and that's Toothless is Santa awesome. now, that's what we're saying. Toothless is Santa. Um, he left yeah, them a yeah. present and ate the fish they left out for him in a bowl. Toothless is Santa now. That's what we're saying. Well, if Sonic, can, if Sonic the Hedgehog can be Santa, why not Toothless? Mm. That actually makes sense. I'm not going to explain this one. You figure, you figure this out on your own. Mm -hmm. But... Um, but uh, again, I think again, really cute, short, yeah. fun way to end this and um, Absolutely. I'm I'm not sure about uh, using the hidden wall the um, epilogue for the credits. Like you know, it's fine. I'm not going. I'm not going to be that petty. But you know, we could we could have thought about something else. Maybe like a small epilogue to that visit or something. I don't know. It, it would have been nice to get something new on top of that, but what we got was fine. It works with what it is. <clears throat> It doesn't okay. stand out as a sore thumb. Like I said, it's cute. It's adorable. It all flows in nicely. It's a nice little bow to wrap up how to train your dragon with. So now I have a question for you. Since we have two Christmas specials now, we have Gift of the Night Fury and this, which one would you say you prefer? <sighs> Probably Gift of the Night Fury a little bit more. I think I would still lean towards Gift of the Night Fury. I will too, even though both of them are kind of touching on different topics, in a sense. But uh, so, like in terms of comparing them, just because both of them are in Smuggle Talk doesn't mean they are necessarily the same. Yeah. But uh, but I will say, I think Gift of the Night Fury leaves me with a bit more of a warm feeling. Not that the Homecoming doesn't. But I think Gift of the Night Fury hits home. A little bit harder right like it you know it, it, it hits you more than what this does this is warm it's adorable it's fun it's enjoyable but it doesn't hit you as hard as gift of the night fury does all right yeah. gift of the night fury is i would compare gift of the night fury to like a very small but still you know enjoyable roller coaster of it has a little bit of up it has a little bit of down then it goes and levels out at the very end this there's not a whole lot of down moments, you know, like when I say down, I mean kind of sadder, more somber moments. Like Gift of the Night Fury does have that more somber moment of Toothless just leaving and not coming back for a while, right? Like it, mm -hmm. it gives you that more somber feeling. So it, it's more of that roller coaster ride. This is a bit more of a, you know, nicer, chill ride where there's not a lot of up, not a lot of down, you know, and that's fine. 
In a sense, I, can, I guess another way to look at this is that Gift of the Night Fury is more about the story, and this one is more about the characters. Oh, yeah. Like which I is, said, this is, this which is, is here you know, to sell this Nightlight is, toys. <laughs> <coughs> but, but you know, I'm not. Say, I'm not saying that uh, that the this is about the character's approach is necessarily bad. On the contrary, no. I I actually enjoyed the show things where you know you can just focus on the characters and let uh, let them carry the thing. So I, I like that. Just I think that the story in Gift of the Night Fury flowed better while yeah. still getting while still while still gi- giving the characters a lot of good uh, a lot of good material. Absolutely. With that said, do we have anything else to say? Mm, I don't think so. So that's been the and that's been it for this episode of the Bellcast. We hope you enjoyed it. What do you, mm-hmm. you think about How to Turn a Dragon and Homecoming? Do you prefer to Gift of the Night Fury? Do you still prefer Gift of the Night Fury? What are your thoughts about the night lights, the kids, the body, everything <coughs> you can tell us all about it in below on our tumblr which is known as, Bell- as bellcast team on our twitter which is bellcast with a capital b capital c and you can find all of us in the house and dragon ball Hall discord server so with all that said i was hc i've been wolf and i said i would save this to the very end hiccup and erit right. <laughs> hiccup and erit valka and erit died in the throes of passion that's why they're not there Thank you, and goodbye.